so we did we have like they did the what do you call it? the cornhole game, we want to play basketball, we want to do frisbee, and the cool thing is when you have kids around the whole park is an asphalt track that they can ride their bike or roller skate, which is cool. Or you can get out there and bring your bike and ride with them, and you can go run. I'll be waiting at you while you do. Come on, somebody. <laughs> so are you guys ready for the word this morning? Amen. Father, we come before you. I can stand. Bob says, 
He always causes us to triumph in Christ. Okay? Doesn't mean we don't have the valleys and the hills and stuff. But let me tell you something. He's with you and I. So, we go back and, uh, about two or three days later. She said, guess what? My mom is at home. High five. Come on. High five. And just 
just because you're not Pastor Brian doesn't mean you can't lead somebody to Jesus Christ. Absolutely. I've had people say, well, you come over and lead so and so. Sometimes I do, and sometimes they say, well, why are you? Why are you? Well, I don't know how. Well, I'm going to tell you real quick how. Ask him does he know Jesus. Tell him to repent of his sin. That's Jesus Christ. Woo! <laughs> you can do it. But see, the enemy has crept in and made the believers that sit in the congregation think that everything falls back on the pastor, that he's the only one that can pray for the sick. He's the only one that can lead. No, I'm just a servant with the mandate to be the pastor of Passion Church. But we all have the mandate. He looked at all his disciples and said, go, all of you. He didn't say, oh, all right, uh, Peter, you're number one. You're until whatever Peter said, you know Peter said. He said, go and teach him to deserve all that I've, that I've taught you. That's what I see when I got a phone call. He didn't know the message was this way. On his way to serve the church, but a lady has a flat tire. He turned over and said, listen, I want the Lord. I'm going to help her. And he didn't have to pray about it. Yeah. Amen. No, just do what God told you to do. Absolutely. Can I get an amen? amen. Mm -hmm. To be a servant, you must be humble. <laughs> Come on, you got to be humble. Be nice. Be a servant. I told you I had a guy call me on Christmas Eve. It was like 10, 45 nights in the hospital. Can you come pray? Yeah. Just, that, just, I'm going. I went to pray. Absolutely. Wasn't the most convenient time? No, I went to pray for it. You know? Sometimes there's things you can do, and sometimes we try to make excuses why we can't do it. Sometimes you might have to serve others in a way that can't be very humbling. Okay? You may have to do some things like help clean them up, if you know what I mean. Yep. You might find somebody, my mother-in-law, there were times where her bowels, she couldn't help and do things. There were times that Paula had to help. We had to call somebody in. We kept the dignity by not me going in because she's a lady. Keep the dignity. There's dignity we need to think about this. All right? And so they go in. There are times you're going to have to do things as a servant of Christ that are very, very humbling. What about cleaning toilets uh, at your work? Somebody just clean it. Go clean it. I've had people come and clean toilets at church. I love you say, I'm not going to do that. Why? Because that's not what God's called me to do. I'm a deacon. I want to serve out here. Oh, so you can't take a, a thing and clean a toilet, but yet you can minister because that's what you want to be seen. Listen, a servant serves. I would not be where I am today if I didn't have that servant's heart. When the pastor asked me, can you help out with the youth? Yeah, I'll be in thousands of rocket. He came in to some worship team. Yeah, I did my best. And went in there and did a worship team. Little did I know that as time went on, the, 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 the youth pastor resigned. I was in Bible school at the same time. All of a sudden, I get a phone call again. I never, I had never, neither one of us, had ever done a summer camp in my life. And he said, listen, the youth pastor resigned. I want you to take, it was Rick, I want you to take the teenagers to summer camp. I said, well, I don't know anything about summer camp. What do you got to do? He said, well, you have to pick up a, a game during the day, uh, have some competition, then at night, you got to be, you know, you got to be read up on the word, and then watch what God will do. I said, well, you know, Rick, I, I'm not, I've only spoken one time in these. I'm not really, you know, and I said, well, you know what? We'll do what you ask us to do. And he said, no, I got more. I said, well, I have to tell my boss so I can get that week off and make sure that he get it. He said, here's the other thing. Whatever week you take off and Paul was a waitress, we got three little girls, barely making six, seven months an hour between the two of us, okay, to survive. And the thing about it is he said, no, no, I'm going to pay your week. Whatever they pay, I'm going to do it for Paula. I said, you don't have to do that. He said, no, it's right here to do it. And by the way, you're going to need that when you go to the summer camp. It's going to be tough. I said, oh. So I just looked at Paul and I said, we're going to do this. And we ended up getting the team. And you know what? We took, we took them there. We served. The first night, I'll never forget the young lady. The whole group was there. Her name was Teresa. She was in front of me. All these other ones were here. And all of a sudden, she told me to pray. And an altar come. Kids were weeping. And it wasn't a message that was all that powerful. It was just that God can change you when you have no hope. but give you hope. And I remember telling them that I was always picked on because I had buck teeth. And every time I'd go home at night and cry and try to put in. But if it had not been for God, have you ever been here? All these kids come forward. And I'm looking at Ed is over. No, Ed is over here. Paul's here. We're all sitting there. And all of a sudden I prayed. And I felt the heat of the Holy Ghost hit my hand. And she went down like a potato. And I'm like this. I'm going. I looked over at Ed. And he's praying. And this is the thing. He's over there praying. And he's looking. And he's looking at me. 
you go, and they're all falling. And all of a sudden, you felt like you wanted to drop. You could feel the anointing of God. All that happened because of serving. I know that I don't have the knowledge to do that. I don't even know very much about that in 1989. And I've got 31 teenagers that I'm supposed to minister to and take out the games the next day, you know, the morning session, you do that, make sure they get the block, make sure they do that. And you know what? It was a great week when we got off the bus and Rick said, hey, I want to tell you something. Because he came up one night, came up two nights. And uh, he said, I've never seen more people, more natural, especially your wife. I said, what will do? Oh, when they're out there by the pool, she's pushing the kids in. She's jumping in with them. She was just like the kid with them. He, she said, and they relate to you guys. You take the position. I said, I got to think about this. So I went back home and told my wife, because I was working for the city of Raiden, should I leave the job at the city of Raiden where you have retirement secure to go do this? And she had looked at Paul with me and said, this is what you're called to do. This is what yeah, you were hanging, you were hanging, you were out of there. She was hanging the laundry outside, cleaning the house. Every day we used to hang laundry. She could read it out of the drive, we used to have a washing machine. And so she hanged it between the house and the garage, and then she was smart. Now we're in the middle, t shirts on the outside. <laughs> so y'all know the y'all know the drill, that's what you did. And she said, Yeah, yeah. I went back to Rick, I said, okay. And Rick said, All right, it's on. And we went from there, I'll never forget. Send them out. The first day. Lydia Anderson down, and we'll get to the point. She gets up, her her lady Mary stuff, happy first day to you. Happy first day to you. Happy first day, dear Brian. Happy first day to you. Oh, hey. Okay, your office is down the hall. Okay. So I walked in there, Joel, this is God's not stupid. I shut the door. I looked at the clock. It's about eight in the morning, and I go, what, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> No, I did. Got to go now. And I felt like the Lord said, do what you're called to do. So I started getting creative. I did that and started a team up. I raised a team up first. I did a team. Next thing you know, it grew 90 some kids. Wow. And God was moving. Oh, it was wonderful. All because I was willing to do whatever. Serving would mean sometimes you back you. Sometimes you do. If your boss tells you that, Zane, I need to go. All right, what do you want me to do? All right, just go do it. Absolutely. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen? Go to the Gospel of John, chapter 13. Verse 5. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Jesus, what are you doing? There's a part where Peter said, no, 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 I'm the earth. You need to be mine. He said, to wipe them with the towel was what he girded. Now look at John chapter 13. You should be going to verse 12. So when he had washed their feet, taken his garment, and he sat down, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you said that well, for I am. You do the right thing, he's done enough. If I then, your Lord and teacher, has washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant, and I say the word servant, a servant, is not greater than his master. What? We know that when you see people serve, your boss is over you where you work at. He's in charge. <laughs> right? You make a point. Nor is he who sent greater than the one who sent him. Okay, I want you to go deliver this same message. Okay. All right, so we went out. So we saw. First I said it. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Then. I did not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture might be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now he's talking about everybody in the room. He's called with his one who's messed up. What about you to say? Now I tell you before it comes, that when it's done to come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. Last week, a girl, that girl received Christ, who Christ sent us, but she also received the one who sent Christ. Amen. Are you here? So when you do what you're supposed to do 
and I do what I'm supposed to do. Guess what, Tom? He is sending us, and he is with us, and they're receiving far well what we said. They'll get their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And all of heaven rejoices. Can you imagine that? The that day when Takiya received Christ, every angel in heaven started shouting and dancing. You talk about how huh? somebody put your hands together and pray. But now I've been washed by the blood. And you look at me, I'm the righteous. 
righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, not of anything I've done, what he says about me. Come on, somebody. You need to start thinking to yourself, I am the righteousness of God. He paid for the price. I've been all yes, is he sanctifying me all the time and washing me? Absolutely. Am I perfect? No. But he's making me all oh, good. Come on now. Yes. Number three, continuously washing of sanctification is done by the power of the Holy Spirit. He lives in us and through us. Watch. Go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Because it talks about washing of the water by the word. That he might sanctify and cleanse her by the washing of the water by the word. The her is the church. He's, he's washing us with the word. <laughs> Every day. Listen. This didn't happen, but it could have. Paul and I could have been driving there to Bird King. She might have said something. We might have gotten the water. It didn't happen, but it happened. But it still didn't apply to what God had planned before. Just because you got in the flesh with each other about something doesn't mean when you go to Burger King you can't lead so and so to Jesus Christ. Just because you got an argument before you got here, oh, the kids don't get over it. No, I'm not going to Praise God, you can be here today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Has it happened many times when my children were little? But I want to say, I pushed my way in, let God wash me and do the best I could. Amen. Come on, man. Come on. 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 For the instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be completely, thoroughly equipped for every good work. He equips us for every good work. Jesus told the disciples, I have given you an example that you should do what I do. We read it in the very first scripture. John 13, verse 15 says, For I have given you that example that you should do as I've done. His followers need to copy him. Emulate him. Do the same things he does. Serving one another in humility. We just talked about that. Seeking to build one another up in humility and love. Well, you can do this, man. Yes, you can. God, you can. Yes, you can. God will be with you. God is with you. That's what I'm going to tell the girl. God's going to answer your prayer. Your mom's going to be all right. We're going to believe it's your team. But that company comes from good walls. You know what that means? God wants you to get some friends that are going to drag you down. I just shared the word with them. How many know so far? We've gotten two hard cards already. Come on. True greatness in his kingdom is attained by those with a servant's heart. You want to be great in the kingdom? They were arguing about who's going to be first? Who's going to be best? I'm say, pride, heart, and dirty feet, man. He's going to They want to know who's going to be the best when you get there. Which one's in charge? Which one's going to do this? Who's going to be the deacon? Am I going to be the other? Or is he going to be the Am I the one in charge or is he the one in charge? Jesus said there were big shoes on there. And he started washing the feet. He said, guys, I'm dead. You got to serve one another because they started doing it. See, you can build one another up, and you know that love is what it is. It's a servant's heart. Mark 9, 35 says, And he sat down and he called the twelve, and he said, If anyone desires to be first, he should be last of all, of all the servants of all. Come on, look at that. Read it. Read it. If anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all, and servants of all. That's Paul. Uh, well, I always say, if I put all my groceries on the counter and I see somebody behind me, and got Two little things. Hey, come on, come on, come on. Look, you just did the other day and the lady said, no, no, I'm okay. Come on, come on. Uh, the lady's already going ching, 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 you know, doing her thing. Go, oh. I said, she goes, no, it's okay. She said, thank you. I said, no, have a good day. God bless you. Yeah, just, just, just being nice. You got two little things. I got all these groceries here. Because, you know, Paul eats all the food now. Anyway, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so it just happens to be to just be nice. If somebody's racing you to the, to the checkout counter, let them go ahead. Or run into the car like Paul did. I mean, yeah, you guys right. just said, I, mean, I heard, I heard she came to be a car. I see it now. Sir, Mark 10 44. Let's see, you know, you decided to be first, be slave ball. You have a servant's heart, the Lord promised he would be a great blessing to us. In John 13 17. If you know these things, Blessed are you if you do that. Look what he said. Now, if, 
Now, do you really need Jesus to show up in front of you to do these things? But he just told you. His words are true. If you do these things, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. When you see a lady with a flat tire, you're on your way to church, you have a position you're supposed to do in greeting, but you see the need, that is the church. You pull over. He didn't know the sermon was going to be that. I know he's going to be that. Isn't that awesome?
but in the marketplace. In Burger the public, on the side of the road on the way to church. Then when you go out to eat today, the waitress is going for the course. Maybe she lost her mom and daddy two days, two weeks ago, and she's still hurt. She had to go back to work. Maybe she's a single mom. Or maybe he, maybe he made for D. And he may not, he may not, he may not know what's going on. Everybody has a story. Absolutely. Give me a heart, Lord, to care. If there's a need that I can met, let me pause and stop and do my assignment for you that you called me to do. We need to get outside our comfort zone and see ourselves as a servant. One day I came home. This is when I lived on 37th Street, so about over 30 years ago. And my wife, children must have been napping because she was never leaving them in the house by herself. And she was knowing the two senior ladies in their 70s next door mom. Well, she had brought us some uh, banana uh, and food. It was so good that Paul just saw that her son hadn't been around for a while to cut the lawn. She wanted to cut the lawn. The lady thanked her, she had no problem. Paul just saw the need and said, I'm going to go cut this lady's lawn because her son hasn't been able to. I'm still there. I said, I've got two kids in the house. I'm going to walk back on the back of the I come in. Yeah. <laughs> 